You rarely hear any American insult one of our POWs, and it is unheard of for a would-be president to do so and then double down, but that's exactly what Donald Trump seems to be doing in an op-ed piece in the USA Today, insisting the Arizona senator has made America less safe while abandoning his fellow veterans. Now, political positions are, of course, fair game for criticism, but attacking what he lived through at war in service of our country is something very different. Our next guest knows John McCain's struggle well because he lived it with him, a fellow prisoner of war who was captured after his plane was shot down in Vietnam. Here to tell us his story and share his perspective, former Navy fighter pilot Captain Charlie Plum. Uh, sir, thank you for joining us on New Day. Sorry it's for this reason, but thank you for your service. Thanks, Chris. Pleasure to be with you. Captain, remind people of what you, John McCain, others endured. Uh, Chris, I was shot down in uh, May of 1967. John came into the camp about three, uh, maybe four months later. I knew him well. He was my flight instructor. I went to the Naval Academy with his brother. I'd served under uh, their father, the Admiral J.S. McCain, so uh, I, I knew who he was. He was one of the most injured prisoners I ever saw in that prison camp. Seven broken bones when he was shot down, and they were twisting his broken bones to torture the poor guy. And yet, one of the toughest guys I've ever I've ever seen. So we we were in and out of those prison camps in North Vietnam for the next nearly six years. Six years. What happened in your head and your heart when you heard that Donald Trump said what he said about John McCain as POW? I, I've got to be honest with you. I, I was uh, I was amused um, to begin with. Uh, John or or. or any one of the 591 guys we were with would never call themselves a hero. John McCain has never referred to himself as a hero. He doesn't feel he was a hero. And so it's a bit of a non-issue of calling a, a person a hero. We were over there in uniform fighting for our way of life. We, we were dedicated to the mission. And in some small way, uh, we were in uniform to protect Donald Trump's right to free speech. Uh, and, and not only that, kind of occurs to me, and I thought about this uh, just immediately when I when I heard the, uh, uh, Trump's remark, that if it, if it hadn't been for men and women in uniform, I mean, if, if, if we'd all gotten deferments, you know, in college, there'd be no opportunity to be a billionaire in the United States. Do you think that John McCain, you, others are owed an apology by Donald Trump? I, I don't need an apology. I don't think John needs an apology. We know who we are. We, we're we very well-adjusted people. And, and, and we understand that, uh, first of all, it's just political rhetoric for the most part. It's just stirring the pot. Uh, so I, I, I don't need an apology. You ever heard anybody say anything like that, let alone someone who wanted to run for president? You know, I never have. Uh, we were treated very well when we came home. And in fact, you know, we were we were really sad to find, we didn't know this at the time, but when we came home, to find that so many veterans had gotten such a, a poor uh, welcome uh, when they came home. And we, the POWs, including John McCain and me, started visiting vets' hospitals. Uh, we had a program uh, uh, every February, uh, on the, uh, the, the 14th of February, every year. Uh, the POWs would visit the VA hospitals uh, to talk to the veterans that didn't get the welcome home that we got. So, uh, yeah, we were we were lauded as heroes when we came home. We didn't feel like heroes, uh, but we accepted the fact that at that time in history, America needed heroes, and we were, we were about the, the only thing you had. So, uh, so, so we accepted that. Well, that's the problem with you heroes, is that you never accept your heroism. That's always the challenge for the rest of us, <laughs> is to make you re recognize what's so obvious to everyone else. Look, political attacks well, are part of the game, Captain. Thank you for that. <laughs> no, thank you, sir. Political attacks are part of the game. That's true. And John McCain's policies are worthy of criticism by Trump and anybody else who's in the game. But do you think it is wrong to confuse that criticism with the service to the country that John McCain and so many others uh, gave? Well, to begin with, it, it certainly some, somehow degrades uh, uh, military people and people in uniform. On the other hand, you have to consider the source. And uh, you know, Trump has never served in the military. He doesn't know. Uh, it, 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 
we used to call them draft dodgers. That's that's basically who we're looking at. But is it the top of the polls, Captain? How do you explain that? Yeah. You know, uh, in all fairness, I, I really uh, appreciate and respect some of the things that Trump is saying. Uh, he's being honest. He's being blunt. He's right out front uh, with, with everything. He's transparent. Uh, and so, no, there's some really good reasons, I think, to, to listen to Donald Trump. Any chance he gets your vote? Uh, no. <laughs> you were being very open-minded there for a second, and I appreciate that, Captain. Thank you very much for your candor and transparency. And thank you uh, for reminding us a little bit of what was lived through in those camps. And again, sir, thank you very much for what you did for the country.